What we've done in the science paper is that we try to show that there's a cause and consequence between the pathology and also dopaminergic cell loss. So to do that, we basically injected um, into mice um, synthetic alpha-synuclein fibros. And so the structure of these fibros are very similar to the pathology that one finds in the brain of Parkinson's disease patient. We saw Lewy body pathology developing and at the site of injection and also sites where those neurons in the injections that are connected to. So basically we see the pathology in neurons that connect to the neurons that we've injected. A small amount of abnormal protein or misfolded protein um, is able to corrupt the normal protein that's in its surroundings. We have no evidence at all that they are either contagious or infectious, so it's not um, like a virus or a bacteria that you can spread from one individual to another. These accumulations correlated perfectly with the appearance of uh, symptoms and neurodegeneration in the brains of these mice. This is very interesting in the sense that, as you know, that um, Parkinson's disease mostly start off with a movement disorder. Um, but over time, when patients are living with a disease for 10 years or so, and about 80% of these patients develop a dementia. And so this established a relationship between the pathology and uh, dopaminergic cell loss. So in other words, that we see the pathology first, and then we see the neuron dying. It's the first time that anyone have demonstrated a direct link between the pathology of Lewy body and dopaminergic cell loss. This new mechanism provide new opportunities to identify new targets for therapy and uh, to treat Parkinson's disease. If this transmission occurs by one cell uh, secreting, for example, this corrupted protein and another cell picking it up, then we could perhaps uh, disrupt this process by preventing the second cell, the healthy cell, from picking up this abnormal protein. What we've done is um, to create a simple mouse model for sporadic Parkinson's disease. And so I think that because this is simple and because this represents a model of sporadic Parkinson's disease, I think that it will be extremely useful and for future studies to understand mechanism of disease and also to come up with new therapies to treat Parkinson's.